Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. To everyone who is watching live right now, thank you for joining us here at Kapua at the Kolekteratura po. We are already at season two and this is our episode seven, Heritage Food and the Gen Z Best Teaching Practices, um, Integrating Heritage Food Appreciation in Classes. So it, it it's going to be a really interesting uh, po, uh, uh, lecture that we will be hearing today. Um, and before anything else, po, I would like to um, let me just uh, remove this here and then show myself here on the screen. Hello, po, sa inyo lahat. Hi, how are you there? Uh, greetings from Washington, D.C. And I would like to call our uh, program, uh, managing program uh, uh, director, po, Ma'am Andre. Ma'am Andre, how is Iloilo? Or nakamit po kayo, hold on. There we go. Okay. Uh, hello, uh, mga kapwa ko, um, guro, um, mga kapwa dito sa Pilipinas at sa buong mundo. Dito po sa Iloilo, makulimlim, parang uulan, pero mamaya siguro iinip din ito. Um, still, <laughs> Alam niyo po dito sa... Yes po. Opo, dito po sa, sa, sa states po, sa Washington DC, it's uh, anlamig pa rin, parang... It's supposed to be summer already, pero ang lamig pa rin, sobrang lamig. So there's really something wrong with the weather. <laughs> yes po, maybe because of the depletion ng ozone layer po, kayo nag-iba-iba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At uh, masaya ako ngayong araw kasi yung guest natin po, Sir Alan, isa pong um, teacher, na, teacher na idol ko nung college. Teacher ko siya wow. si Humanities 2. Um... Basta magaling siya in terms of her craft at saka sa food. Kaya napili ko siya maging panauhin natin. So, nice. siya po ay um, nanalo ng Dorin Gamboa Fernandez DGF Food Writing Award noong 2019 for Syrup and the Sea Breeze about a karinderia in Northern Iloilo and the dish that place is known for, linabog which is a cooking in coconut milk and turmeric of syrup or snake macaroon. Uh, our guest will share best teaching practices integrating heritage food appreciation in classes. Uh, these fun experimental activities leave a strong impact on the students and benefits the community as well. Currently, she is a faculty of the Division of Humanities, UP and the Visayas here in Iloilo, teaching arts one and cultural heritage and has a master's in art history from UP Diliman. Um, may I present to you uh, my very own teacher in college, uh, Professor Marie Joy Rosal Sumagaysay. Makulturang araw po, Ma'am Joy. Happy Food Month po sa inyo. At Hello po, Ma'am Joy. Nice so, meeting you salamat, po. Salamat, salamat sa pag-imbita sa akin dito. Malakas kasi si Andre, kaya ito na pa. Yes! <laughs> Timing lang, ma'am. <laughs> yes. At thank you po sa pagpapaunlak po ninyo sa amin. Mukhang thank you, thank gugutumin you, po kami sa mga sa lecture po ngayon. <laughs> We're really excited to uh, to hear po uh, um, your lecture. So, without further ado po, we're gonna go ahead and proceed with the lecture. So, the floor is yours. Just tell me po when to uh, move the screen uh, to the next page. Okay, so once again, thank you for the invitation. Kuliteratura, uh, what a nice uh, term, no? Thank you for inviting me here. Uh, because the topic is something, when Andre said that uh, you have a lot of teachers watching this uh, these episodes, that's why I said yes, because um, this can probably help them and enliven their own teaching in, yeah, especially with what we perceive to be as a difficult generation. They call the Gen Z. All right. So, yeah, uh, let's proceed. Hmm, let's see. All right, so a little shameless post here. 
No, not really. That's me. I think in my previous lifetime, I must have been a market vendor. I just love markets. It's my happy place. In wherever I go, markets are always part of my itinerary. So you are seeing two photos there. Uh, the one on top, um, you can silently guess if you're watching this recorded session and give yourself a pat on the back if you can guess it right. Where is that? That is an old photo of Haro Market. And I suspect the house of my Lolo was probably somewhere there at the back because my Lolo's father was a matador at the Haro Market. Now, the one at the bottom is a photo of Albay, where my father hails from. So I am 50% Bicolana and 50% Ilonga. And both families, uh, from both families, I have learned heritage food, good cooking, quality ingredients, the passion for, for the culinary arts. That's why I'm sharing this to you. This is my background, uh, my story, the reason why I have, for the past five years, I have been actively engaged in heritage food. Next slide. Okay, this is where the shameless post should be. Uh, this is my IG. You see, I don't have many followers. Well, I don't really promote it aggressively. The reason why, I, sir, you can click it so the images come out. The reason why I created this IG is to have a um, data bank of heritage food, contemporary food, and everything else in between that I come across. So this is what I do as a hobby. When I, I love going to market, so you see on the right corner, lower right corner, that's from, from uh, Sibalom, Antique, a very organized uh, kudkuran system in uh, the market. Then, uh, a lot of heritage food I document through photos. If you move uh, upper left corner, the one beside it with a heart-shaped leaf, that is the Antiqueño Sapal, which is a fermented rice cake. And this is one Ilongo rice cake that is fast disappearing. So far, we have only found two makers left in Antique doing this. In Iloilo province, there seems to be none doing this uh, sapal. Um, let's see. Uh, bottom left, you have pancit molo, heritage food also of molo, Iloilo. And then... I also love to cook at home. So when I have friends come over, I would uh, treat them to anything that's available or what comes to mind. So there you go. And finally, the bottom photo, you see two, these two amazing women. They are heritage food artisans making an extraordinary sumanletik. And sadly, the daughter, my good friend Gemma, the, the one beside the nanai in the photo, she passed away about three months ago. So now, nobody's going to make this exceptional sumanletik. Okay, so that's the reality of heritage food. If we don't start documenting and promoting and patronizing them, we are going to lose these precious traditions. Next slide, please. 
Okay, so in four photos, these are your Gen Zers. These are technically these are are t. These are people born between twenty twenty seventeen. No, I'm sorry, nineteen ninety seven to onwards. So they they are called Gen Zers or Generation Zoomers. And this is how we usually see them, no? They are fashionistas. They love to get photographed, no? They like to have these poses. Um, they are also very creative, no? And they're very modern. That is the general impression of these Gen Zers. And so um, we feel that it's so hard to convince them to like heritage in general because they are we apparently they look so modernized they look to the west for inspiration okay so that seems to be the problem next slide please but in the next slide this is my thesis this is my belief and i have proven that with my classes. My thesis is that with creative approaches done in love and passion, Gen Zers become the best ambassadors for heritage food. As the pictures show. So that is my belief. That with the right uh, motivation and the right approaches, the teaching techniques, strategies, what have you, you will get converts and you don't need uh, and you don't have to worry about the future of heritage food because these young people will be the ambassadors for that. Sila na mismo, no? So let's proceed. So my talk is very simple, um, nothing fancy here. I'm just going to share with you through photos and uh, some background stories and info. These are what I have done. Yeah, for the past uh, 25 years, but the acceleration and the focus on heritage food promotion happened in the past five years. No, but I remember that way back when I was still teaching communication subjects, I would always find ways to integrate food into my teaching. Okay, so I think there's some more, sir. Please click. Yep. Okay, so I have grouped them into two, four, six. There's, there's two more. Hiding. Yep. So I have grouped them into eight. These are the things I have actually done. And I hope that by sharing this with you, you will also pick ideas. You can actually adopt them in your own approaches. So are you ready? Let's begin. Let's begin with the first practice that I, I have done. Written outputs. Next slide, please. Okay. So, you see, Doreen G. Fernandez, who is the guru of um, Philippine food and culture. Unfortunately, she has left us already. DGF is my idol. I really like the way uh, how she conducts her research and puts it puts it together into a very readable essay. Now, um, ever since in my writing courses, what I would do is use her, her essays as models. And I would let the students make their own essays similar to hers. As you see here, the achara, 
that's by a student there. She's a, she's, she's uh, working now. And then here, another one here. So it's like hitting two birds with one stone. First, they get to learn the right way of integrating reference materials, paraphrasing materials into their own writing. And second, they get to remember and document the food that they like. So when you have a, an essay, an assigned topic like this, writing becomes no long, or writing is no longer a burden because it's so relatable to the person writing it. Aside from that, the third bonus of this is you get a document. You get something documented. So it's hitting three birds with one stone. By doing this kind, and it's not even a 20-page research paper. It's just like, it's just one page. Yet it's, it's well done. It's, it's correctly done. The documentation is correct. The data is accurate. The student enjoys what, what they did. And fourth, they get to interact with their own uh, uh, resource persons, like their family members or neighbors. So um, this was a very good practice done. And this was for an English class, huh? for, a, for a research writing class. So this is how I integrated food into a written output. OK, next. Ah, cook shops. I, I coined that word. I call them cook shops instead of a workshop. And I miss this so much. The students miss this also because the past two years, we've had no interaction, right? Now, the one on the left, I was invited to Philippine Science High School in Iloilo. And in just three hours, we were able, they were able to receive a talk, after which a cook shop followed. It was very simple, but it was the first time for many to make muasi. Okay? The muasi or palitao. Many did not even know what it was. So these are students, they are so knowledgeable in science and math, but their knowledge of their own culture needed more push. So they enjoyed it very much. Now the second photo, that's one done in school as a culminating program. The second and the third photo. Um, I told my students, come up with a, a pop-up cafe in our school and sell only heritage food. So what did they sell? They sell, sold boiled camote, they sold bananas um, and native coffee. And the students, the other students who passed by really enjoyed it. I even saw some students from Mindanao and we learned that they would dip the bananas in uh, bagoong. So for Ilongos, that was a bit of a surprise. Who among you dips your boiled bananas in Guinamos? Okay. And the fourth photo is in another school. Again, I was invited to do a cook shop. And it was a first for these students. In three hours, they were able to make pancit molo from scratch, from scratch, meaning they seasoned the pork, they wrapped the molo balls in the authentic way, not looking like shomai balls, no, but pancit molo balls. And then they made the broth, they shredded the chicken, all of that. And afterwards, they enjoyed eating it. That's the best part in these cook shops because the students get to savor their own creation. So it really stays with them. The memory, this, this, the taste stays with them and they have the desire to do it again. That's how we keep heritage alive. Next slide, please. The third 
is infographs. Okay. There you go. Just some samples. Okay. The, the one on the left, Karan Unon, you know this was done on the spot at Pisay. I just told them, okay, you have uh, cartolina with you and colored pens. I want you in 15 minutes to draw and label as many Ilongo Kakanin as you know. It was fun. And it was hilarious. Some of the, some would even say, Miss, Miss, Anugani, what do you call that one? They, they didn't, they no longer knew the names. They were confused of the names of this Kakanin because some of them no longer had that as part of their um, eating vocabulary. It was not in their family food culture anymore. And they enjoyed it. So it was a simple but fun activity and the impact, but the impact was big. And you, you see, it's not a lecture. The ideas, the data came from them. My job was just to make the corrections and make the clarifications. Uh, that is my belief that our students are, have pearls within, within them. They have pearls. They're like oysters. They have pearls within them. All you have to do is take out those pearls. Um, I don't believe in spoon feeding because it's, you know, for Gen Z years, that's very boring. It's like punishment. With the right approach and the right motivation, these Gen Z years are very creative. Take a look at the second. That's Tinoom. Wow. This, this student uh, really had it in her. She had the, the artistry for it. Now, the role of the teacher here is to help uh, fix or, or edit the, the information. So I, after she submitted her final, final draft, of course, that got a grade. But after that, I told her, let's meet. I want to help you make this even better. And that's what happened. So here is a very informative, creative infograph that anyone, like um, a Filipino in the U.S. who wants to cook tinoom, all the person has to do is take a look and follow the instructions here. Okay. Oh, the third is a documentation of of biscuits and cookies in southern Iloilo. This is another fantastic one. Again, the teacher, may I emphasize this, we don't simply give out orders. Teachers are supposed to mentor, to guide, to, to make corrections, to, to, to help edit the works. Because the students, uh, that, that's what we're here for you know students are are just learning and they're not the experts yet but they have the creativity for it so i'm so proud of these outputs and it's so doable and very practical and enjoyable for for everybody the fourth approach that i have done with my classes is the next slide Yes, design support. So I would challenge uh, my students in Arts One. Uh, if you want a project for your project component in the course, how about you design a label for an artisan who has no resources at all? Like they're just there selling in the market. And you know that um, they are struggling financially, yet the, the product that they offer is very good. How about you make a design for them, for their product? So these are some samples. Okay. Thank you. Next. Ah, 
Oh, yes. Those were the days. Everyone is itching to do this, right? Food walks and heritage trips. Not a trip to the mall, by the way, huh? Heritage trips, like going to the market, going to a series of uh, food artisans, or a mix of built heritage, like you go to a church and then you go to food. Like I did that with the Molo food walk. I have a Molo food walk, and I also designed an Aharo food walk. Okay, we even did a bok choy taste test in Central Market. So you see the students on the right. My daughter is also in the picture. They're doing a bok choy taste test inside Central Market. There are three bok choyans there. And we ordered one each. And it's a blind test. It was fun. But we had to keep the results to ourselves until we got out of the market or else they the owners of the bachoyan will be fighting <laughs> okay at the bottom left is the antique heritage tour and for that it was a two-day cultural heritage trip and no we did not eat in any in Jollibee or Makdo or Mang Inasal. Instead, I made sure that they had a traditional Antikenyo breakfast by the sea. And they had to eat kinamot style with, with the hands, no utensils. Priceless memory for these for this students. Okay. Heritage trips and food walks. Very, very effective. Next. Ah. Oh, yes. This is a culminating program for my Arts One class. And you see the two pubs on the left? The students do that. I just guide them. I tell them, okay, this is the, this, these are the details that must be present. Insert a patajong uh, into the design. But the rest, that's their, that's their, that's them. And they never cease to amaze me. These Gen Zers are just exploding with creativity. You just have to, you know, you, you just have to be there to guide them. So this is what they did. I gave uh, them, as I said, okay, let's have an avant-garde fashion show. I'll give six heritage dishes of Iloilo. So I gave, and then they drew lots. There were four sections. So Dinuguan, Valenciana, Batchoy, Pancit Molo, is, um, KBL, uh, Tinuom. And then they interpreted it. And that's, that's what happened. It was awesome. And may I say something now about these fashion, so, fashion shows? There are some schools who, who do sustainable type of eco-fashion, fashion show events. The problem that I see there, however, is they would tap outsiders to design and to put together the outfits, including the makeup, the walking, everything. So that defeats the purpose. What happens is the classmates, the, the entire class, simply uh, chip in money, right, to pay these designers, these production people to create the outfit, the gown, whatever, for their contestant. That doesn't meet any objective there because the students are not participating and we are not tapping the creativity of the class. Here, 100%, they did it all by themselves, everything. And it's, we just have to have faith in our students. And we, we should not subcontract this to outsiders. I wish DepEd will do something about that. OK? So another, I think we're, we're to, down to our number seven approach. 
is next slide ah this is the current con event that we started um five years ago my friend and colleague Eman Lerona coined the fancy term Karancon, so for Karan Unan Congress. Um, it just started as a potluck event of my friends and I, I said, who are interested in Ilongo heritage food. I said, how about we meet one Sunday afternoon and just bring any and we'll just share it. I'll bring coffee, you bring all the kakanin, any, anything. And this is what we ended up with. For the very first Karankon, this is how much food was brought by my friends, by lovers of heritage food. So I asked my class, I tapped my class to organize the event. And look, please view the video. This is what they did. We invited three heritage food artisans to be our guests so please take a look kindly click sir yes do you hear the uh sound po? no sound oh i don't there we did it in a heritage house. Where? We even had a registration section. Andre, you're there. So awesome. Uh, yeah. And you know the the Bible the, the, but what's that Bible story of Jesus? Uh the fish and two loaves. This is it, no? At no cost. Uh each one just out of generosity brought something and it just it was just more than enough for us. So that's how it started. The current con event was started this way, but it evolved, as you will see in the next slides. Yeah, we have done just before the pandemic. We have so far five current cons. And all these posters, mind you, are designed by the students. Next slide. 
So it has grown bigger and bigger. And these are the things that happen. There's a poster exhibit. You see? There's a poster. There's a talk by food, food artisans. There's a cook shop. And then the samplers, the food samplers. And the guests, it's open to everyone. You can eat as much as you can. But if you offer some donation, that's also welcome. So this is the formula of a Karancon event. The posters are done by the students. They took the photo. They do the research. But of course, the teacher has to come in and check the data, check the research approach and the grammar and all that. So it can be, it can be tiring also on my part. But you see when we think that we're doing this uh, to help them and to, to help heritage, uh, it's fine. And we, we all are happy with the outcome. It, because it becomes a public document, that's why the teacher must be around to, to make sure that the, that the writings are clear, concise, and accurate, right? There you go. So the event got bigger such that by the fifth Karancon, my other co-teachers decided to adopt the model and they did their own Karancon also. So I was very happy about it. Bottom photo, we had an EBOS wrapping cook shop with a 90-year-old master EBOS maker. Yes. Okay, uh, next slide. Yes, our Karancon got bigger and went outside the University of the Philippines because I was invited to do, to organize a one-day Karancon event in the local government of Balasan one day event and i conducted a workshop and within the day mind you they were able to document make a mini poster display eight heritage rice cakes in balasan in one day and they even had the mayor come and do the ribbon cutting of their instant um Karancon event it was so wonderful so they themselves were surprised that they had so much they had many kinds of rice cakes and some of these were near extinction already so because of the workshop of the food mapping one day food mapping Karancon event in Balasan they were able to document eight right away and keep them alive okay and only what this year next slide please it went to ibahai a clan another uh Karankon food mapping workshop in a clan we also did it in one day so the uh unfortunately there were no students because it's uh lockdown only the teachers and this is what they put up the ibahainans are so artistic and these are just two they presented six so each one had a special booth this is for huwad huwad this is this was a disappearing delicacy of Ibahai. It's called Tambungan. Tambungan. Next slide. There. So they presented six, two, four, uh, seven. Seven heritage in one blow. Amazing. Just amazing. Okay, so we're down to our very to the very last approach which I find very effective and powerful. 
and that's in the next slide. Yes, video outputs. Uh, I'm aware that teachers often give them give this uh, project to students, but I, I I have learned from students that the teachers do not guide at all. As I've been saying earlier, we have to be part of it. We have to supervise, uh, uh, edit, guide, you know, all of that. Otherwise, they, the students will feel, will feel left alone. Okay, so that's one. You can find that in YouTube. Okay, next. Okay, some best outputs. All right, can I show you this one? We submitted this to the Mama Sita uh, last year. This is one of the of the best outputs. But let me emphasize that when I make the students uh, create these blogs, they the blogs the vlogs are not graded for artistry. I don't grade for the video quality, production design, editing. No, there's no grade for it. The grade is based on just three things. Number one, did they conduct the interview with their relative? Number two, did they cook the dish themselves? And number three, did they talk about their insights in the vlog? So three tasks. If they do all three, no matter how crude the video is, it gets a perfect 100. The, the video editing, you see, the creativity part, is not the objective of this project. It's just a bonus. I would like to emphasize that. If you want to adopt this approach for your own classes, please do not grade them for the creativity because it's not going to be fair. There will be others who are really very good and there are those who don't have the talent for that so it's not a fair basis since that is not the objective of the event anyway okay so this one may i just show you okay please Come in. Masala, ako po ay taga Ibaran, Batangas. Tuwi pong undas or November 1, ang usually pong niluluto ng mami nung kami ay maliligit pa, ay pinindot at malitaw. Ever since we were little, our holidays have been a mixture of Batangueño and Ilonggo cultures. With every vacation in my mom's hometown in Ibaran, Lola always spoiled us with a delicious kakani. This piesta minatay, we have decided to make palitao. This is the Luzon version of the Ilonggo Muasi. The ingredients are simple. Grated coconut, white sugar, sesame seeds, and glutinous rice flour. Originally, people used to have their sticky rice ground at the town market. But nowadays, one can just buy ready-to-use glutinous rice flour in packs. The way we make palitao is not any different from how others do. First, the sesame seeds are toasted until it becomes this light brown color. Two cups of glutinous rice are mixed with one cup of water. However, since I'm not really good with the measurements, I messed up. So I just added a few more tablespoons of rice powder to reach our desired consistency. The mixture is then kneaded enough to make sure that it can be molded into this round patty. While doing this, we already started to boil water in the pan. Malalaman mo po, na yun ay luto na, po yun ay naglitaw na, na tumaas na sa tubig na mo, kaya po yun ay palitaw ang tawa. For the toppings, the roasted sesame seeds are mixed with white sugar. But before that, each rice cake must be rolled on the grated coconut. Some people like to just sprinkle the sugar and sesame, but for us, we like to roll it on the mixture. And just like that, you have cooked your own palitao. You can serve this together with kuchinta, suman, puto, and pinindot. I know this kind of delicacy is fairly easy to create, but for me, it was difficult. 
one, because I might not get it right. Two, because I might not live up to my grandmother's version. Palitao is just one of the many rice cakes in the country, and one out of a lot in the world. Japan, South Korea, and other neighboring countries have their versions too. We can't really say who made it first, but one thing is for sure. Rice cake traditions will most certainly thrive in places where rice is available. But these things aside, I think she's glad to see us continuing her recipes and sharing it with friends and family. This way, we are not only remembering her, but honoring her in the things she was most passionate about. Okay, that was, um, of course, very professional looking. Now, I'll show you one more. Next slide, sir. Just to show you, uh, we have to go to the next slide. Okay, just to show you that I am not grading for the creativity. That's just extra. But here you will see that the video production is, is basic. But what uh, really filled my heart with joy was to see the interaction of the son, my student, with the parents who helped him out for the first time, or it was his first time to make a good, to grate the coconut. So this video has been spliced, no? Uh, yeah, I think we can we can proceed and uh, click, po, click. One, two. Ako ay si Rosario Asarton Ares. Ina ni Jan Richard Carl Ares. Ngayon, ang gagawin natin ay lino pa in Tagalog. Sa aming dialect, ito ay pinatawag na gusa. Ito ang natutunan ko sa aking nanay nung high school pa ako. Ang mga sangka po ingredients ay ang sumusunod. Number one, saging. Number two, milog. At saka number three, asuka. Unang-una, ang saging ay lutuin. Habang ito ay niluluto. Oh, ito yung fun part. Kasi this boy is very matalino, but he lacked the survival skills. <laughs> very smart in science and math. So it was his first time to open a coconut. So the father had to help. This is actually a really great example, Paul. Uh, that's uh, uh, for our uh, later on for our discussion. Yeah, we can we can end it there, so that we still have time for for the discussion. Yes, po, po. Uh, I'll just go to my very last to recap. Oh, oh there you go. Po. This one, okay. po? Um, it would be nice to show this, but we won't have time for discussion. Oh, okay, po. Next. Okay, this yeah. So just to recap, these are the choices. These are the ways you can integrate food heritage into your teaching. So thank you very much. There's one more slide. Oh, oh it's fine. Let me just open it. Nice, no, just a Gen Z year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me just go ahead and share the screen here. There you go. There we go, Paul. It's a Gen Z you're inviting you to have snacks. Very nice, Paul. Thank you so much, Paul, ma'am, for the uh, really great presentation. Oh, Paul, oh, Paul, oh, Paul. Really, really good presentation, Paul. We have a lot of questions actually to you um, uh, on this. Uh, on this uh, uh, let me just uh, hold on a second. I think I'm hearing a feedback. 
I didn't hear anything. Po. Okay. Po. So um, again, Paul, thank you so much for uh, for that really really great presentation, Paul. Um, actually, someday we're we're looking into um, writing a book about our collected tula seasons, um, and hopefully, Paul, th actually, this would be a great uh, part of um, of what we're planning um, because uh, you know. As we know it, Paul, our, our culture is uh, slowly fading. Many of our different cultures in the Philippines are slowly fading. And this is something that is also concerning that I just realized. Our col our culinary heritage is also slowly fading, Paul, um, as I can see here in this uh, in this presentation. Um, so, uh, uh, a question that I have is, um, is this. Why do you see, or what do you see is the greatest problem? Why our culinary heritage is aggressively fading? Mm. I'm. I won't agree with the aggressively thing okay. there. With the aggressive, aggressively fading because I see great hope. Why? For one, you have this. You are doing this, and in Manila. The Doreen Fernandez event, the food mm -hmm. writing thing. Uh, there's also, what I'm saying is, there's so many small organizations now doing something, taking note of, of the importance of food heritage. Why do we even have April as Heritage Food Month? That is a major, that's a major uh, development already. For the for the government to recognize the importance. Why is DOT aggressive in promoting? No, what I'm saying is there's this consciousness already. So um, I understand. No, I understand that you you and I too. Ha, I'm saddened by some fading. No, but as a whole, there is hope. There is hope. That is really that's uh, that's actually re reassuring to know, Paul. That you know, there's there's you know work like this, like what you are doing. Um, this is actually a great way for teachers. Um, what I like about this presentation also is that you even uh, uh, basically uh, taught how them not only the um, uh, different ways and how they can incorporate it, this uh, you know uh, uh, culinary our culinary uh, heritage into their teaching, but even how they can grade their students, you know, their grading uh, grading rubric. Yeah. Um, so, we're in, you know, kung video, uh, it's good that they create video, but don't grade them by their artistry because that's not what they're grading. That's not what you're grading them for, not their art. I, I put that explicitly in my instructions, and you will be surprised. Like during this pandemic, it's it's very explicit in the module. I say you get zero points for creativity. There's no points for creativity. It's up to you whether you want to make it creative or not. And you know the outputs? They're all creative. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Maybe kill, maybe. Because oh. The motivation is no longer grades. Yeah. They're yeah. motivated to make it really good because they want to, not because they want to get a high grade. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 That's always actually that's the positive way of motivation is when you when you actually motivate them not because of grades only but you're motivating them to do it because out of their own will to do it nice you know to to yes. to really help out so yeah. you thought uh, it, it basically on your lecture you showed us um that you know these are things that teachers can do um to help uh, kind of uh, revitalize our uh, culinary heritage are how else for how can we further revive our culinary heritage aside from you know our teachers uh being there helping uh in reviving and you mentioned the uh, writer who is from manila also who's writing but any other ideas for you think that we can do in order for to help revitalize our culinary heritage well i can only speak for my oh. own little circle which is the academy mm. but in my own private way through my Instagram and my FB posts, I, I promote heritage food artisans, hoping that they would get more uh, customers or patrons. But you see, DOT is also doing doing a lot. Mm -hmm. no? You also have uh, the culinary, there's a group, there's a, the culinary, 
I forgot the term. <laughs> but there's a there's an FB group of active culinary, and there is a a new batch of heritage food advocates out there. In fact, on on Saturday, I hope to meet some of them because the DGF is hosting an awarding ceremony for a new. Uh, they're coming out with the winners for for the 2021 Doringi Fernandez food writing. So a lot, a lot is happening. A lot is that's, happening. That's really great to know, Paul. Um, but, oh, yeah, except that I noticed that in the culinary schools, yeah, in our, what do you call this, HRM? HRM. Yes, okay. HRM uh, this heritage angle is not is not so in 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 yeah. trend. Yeah, I they, can see they that. They are focused on fusion. They're focused on reinterpreting a heritage dish. But if you tell them to cook me a traditional Valenciana, they won't be able to do it. Well, yeah, I mean, I could see that happening. But maybe also what I see happening is that they're more focused on the economic aspect of it of uh cooking not the uh cultural or the uh the heritage value um of the cooking pot um so we we talked about gen z and uh, it seems like you know with this one that your your lectures also focused on the gen z why do you think uh gen z's have a great role in revitalizing our culinary heritage Paul? and i think you mentioned this a little bit already at the beginning but well, you know they have the skills that we, uh, the Gen Xers, don't have. They have the, they're very techy. So for promotion, you don't need to hire an advertising agency. You just have to get them to love heritage food because they will be the ones promoting it and bringing their friends along to try it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's why you know they, that's that's their role for it is to kind of like um, let other people know basically yeah, introduce to everyone uh, their friends probably who are not familiar with the culture and um, the different uh, culinary heritage that we have as Filipinos or even their own regional uh, culinary uh, heritage uh, is very important. Yeah, I think you you just have to make it relevant to them. Off my head, I'm thinking of the Joanne's fish balls in Molo. Joanne's mm -hmm. fish balls. Uh, before that, hindi na yan pinapansin. And it was, they, they used to have around 10 cards and they ended up with just one. Until, uh, I think I recall, I started bringing my students on a Molo food walk and that was one of our stops. So, you know, they had friends and then they brought their friends along and then you had uh, food bloggers in Iloilo becoming conscious of it. So now, if you're if you're a tourista in Iloilo and then you go to Molo, part of your food experience is to try Joanne's fish balls. Fish balls so yeah. that's how you keep the tradition going. When you have young people patronizing it. Yes, that's very important. You mentioned a while ago Paul, that um, about fusion, you know, the uh, fusion of different, um, uh, well, different cultures. So they call that uh, in 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 anthropology, they call that uh, transculturalization of uh, uh, of food. Um, so with that fusion Paul, of food. What are the dangers of so-called fusion food preparation aside from losing its authentic value? You know, the best person to the, the best, the authority on this, reserve this for uh, Miss Feliz. Santa, I have my thoughts about it, but Miss Feliz has a very nice insight on that. All right. Okay, Paul. Yeah. We will we'll make sure to uh, to uh, to yes. bring this uh, question to her <laughs> when we get to uh to uh, meet her, Paul. Um. So you've been working with a lot of teachers, Paul. Have you taught this this lecture, Paul, to teachers also already aside from this one here? Uh, in the current con event. Ah, so okay. uh, I I I would share that. No, it's it's a meta thing. 
So mm. when I did karan kon in ibahay, it's like I I showed them how to do it. So in before I went to ibahay, I already had three pages of instructions on what to do. Mm, so the teachers, it's like t- training the teachers. Yeah, opo, opo. So that when school goes back to normal, they can actually do it with their own classes. Everything is laid out for them. And I wish they would. I cannot force them, no? But I, I wish they would. Nice, po. This one, po, so when you teach this to teachers, po, um, in your own view, how responsive are our teachers in helping revitalize this culinary heritage in your own opinion well i got uh, i got one school interested wit with mm-hmm. got interested so we did it online so i gave those two teachers the instructions how to conduct it so i was like supervising it and we had a we had a day of reckoning and then the students submitted their outputs and it was good mm-hmm. enough no oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. i mean those uh, e- e- even with those things i think it's very important and the same principles what we do here in cultura po. when we teach teachers Dibo ba, Ma'am Andre, we, we keep saying that, that when we teach te- teachers kahit iinan lang sila dyan, apat sabihin mong apat but in their own classroom, they have 50 students. They will share that to 50 students. So four times 50. So oh, yes. rin po yun. So that's yes. how it's that's how powerful yes. teachers are. Yes. So yes. going to like the um to the teachers, so we, we that's okay, we've got that covered. But how about LGU sport? Do you know if these food artisans have support from LGU? You know, the like how you are doing. As far as I know now, the LGUs are starting to document. They're doing their cultural maps. That's about it. But to say cultural mapping, they're doing it because it's a requirement now with the LGUs. But as to actively supporting these artisans, I'm not sure. Example, Oton. Oton is not aware they have that they have many a heritage food artisans in their town they don't really promote them i not i you know i don't really want to push my program to each and every lgu but if an lgu notices it i would i would gladly offer my help to to bring them together in a karankon event that's how they get exposure i saw mom and mom andre in one of your events so oh yes answer. the very oh. first I want to ask you, Ma'am Andre. First Ma'am hand. Andre, Ma'am Andre, how was that? In your yes, own, in your own Masaya po kasi um, we are not required but we are um, Ma'am Joy opened it to all of us to bring food. Um, what not did you bring? Specific, um, Aripahon. Uh, Aripahon. Aripahon. <laughs> What's that? I I know, know, eh. What did you bring? I brought myself. <laughs> kasawa, kasawa pudding. I don't know what, what is that Steam in kasawa. Manila. I don't know. What do you call kasawa. that? Wow. Para, it's um cassava but with steam cassava. Yun po. Steam cassava roll. <laughs> Yes. How was that, how is that different from a like regular cassava, parang cassava cake na ginagawa nila? So it's cassava roll. Cassava cake has milk. Yes. Ah, yung cassava the, roll the po ng milk. Sugar. It's just sugar and grated cassava. And buko. Yes. Oh. yes how was the experience there, wow. Andre? Uh, that was the very first Karankon in Iloilo. It's yeah. it my first time wow. to get inside a Castilian house, I think. It's a Castilian uh, house. It's, Castilian, uh, ha? it's not a Castilian house. It's, it's a heritage po. house. It's a heritage, heritage house. house po. Yung mga 1920s, siguro 30s yes. na mga kamit. Tapos, it's a chalet. 
Yes po, dinalhan mo po ng ano, ng food tapos nakikita do- mo doon po yung mga nakikita mo sa street mga street vendors na mga artisans na nag nagbebenta po ng mga kakanin in the afternoon tapos nagde-demonstrate sila kung paano sila mag uh, paano lutuin, paano nila nilalako yung ano, yung mga kakanin. Tapos uh, experience din po na no? kumain ng mga different uh, delicacies ng mga dito sa Iloilo. So parang it's food, tapos it's camaraderie, tapos yung parang, parang hindi siya mawala sa mga taga Iloilo. In other places siguro po ma meron din sila, pero at least sa, sa atin po, I think this is the very first. Um, wala pa. In other places, wala. Yung ganun wala. format, wala pa. Yes. So, it's our... So, dito nag, nagmula. Sana po ma, makita ng mga ibang provinces at siguro makapi nila at para ma-preserve din yung kanilang native delicacy po. At yeah. uh, based po sa inyong lecture po, na-remember ko po, in my class, I also did um, have this food in their man, uh, organizational management, they prepare native food. So they prepare in Saraga po. I'm teaching holy um, in Saraga, Sacred Heart Academy. Um, their, the popular dish there po, Sir Alan, is um, uh, yung isda. Anong tawag doon? Um, pantat? Pantat. Milkfi- milkfish ba? Catfish po, Sir Alan. Catfish. Catfish. Ah, Tapos, sa ano po yan? Spaltat. Ah, paltat. Okay. Oh. Tapos, ginawa po nila, ma'am, na ano, na um, uh, pantat spread. Oh, wow. Ito, so, ito yung mga innovations. Na, yes po. Na, um, pero yung alaman ko sa inyo na na-learn ko is do not judge them and how they present. Kasi um, I asked them to uh, take a vlog, make it into a vlog, tapos i-present nila sa klase. And then, sad to say, um, I accept my mistake Alam. at nalaman ko sa inyo na dapat hindi sila binigyan ng creativity grade. Kasi sa asasabi nyo, yung iba merong high pitch na merong pera na pwede sila mag, ano, mag-hire ng people pero yung output talaga is on the art the food artistry ay uh, art and uh, the food itself na paano nila yeah, ginawa um, for teachers ganito you you be clear about your objectives anong gusto kong makita sa itong output na to number one, anong gusto kong gawin niya sa output na to yung sabi ko kanina one, kailangan ma-interview niya yung nanay niya o lola niya o neighbor na nagluluto okay Bigyan ko kita na example. Gumawa siya ng video. Ang ganda, magaling siya magano ha? Magaling siya sa editing, maganda, siya, maganda yung production design. Pero yung task one, wala. Missing. So, hindi yan, hindi yan pwede maging excellent kasi kulang yung task na ginawa niya. Kahit anong ganda pa ng video niya. And ang problem doon, nasisway tayo. We get, uh, nasilaw na tayo sa ganda ng production. Pero yung content, kulang pala o mali. Kaya tinatanggal ko yung creativity, extra na lang yan. Kung gusto mo pagandahin, sige, gawin mo. Kasi gagawin talaga nila maganda. Pero siguraduhin mo na kompleto yung tatlo. So, an easy way to grade it is 10-10-10. 10-10-10. 10, in 10. Nagluto ba? 10 din yan. Nagbigay ba ng insights sa vlog? Yung nagsalita-salita, 10 din yan. So, 30 points. Pag wala yung isa, AB, sa task na tatlo, pag wala yung isa, zero siya doon. Ah, okay. So, so all of the introductions, mm-hmm. all of the introductions of the food is in the interview. Po? All of the introductions of the food that they will present is in the interview. Hindi, hindi rin eh. Kasi there's the challenge. Three minutes lang yon Three or four. Ah, okay. So, papasok doon yung creativity mo kung paano mo yan i-compress na ma- mas ma-meet mo yung tatlong objectives. Kasi sasabihin nila, ma'am, nag-overtime ako kasi kulang. Hindi. Hindi pwede yon You have to find a way. So, yung i-require, ma'am, three minutes lang? 
uh, four. Actually, four. Four sa akin, ma'am. Kasi mapapagod ang teacher. Kung ten, ten minutes, ma'am. Mga walang ka ng gana na mag-open. Oh. Ten minutes. So unfair yeah. na sa mahuhuli. Hindi na sila mag-grade ng objective. Ganun. Yeah, it's too long. Ah, okay. Three, 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 four, three, four, four minutes. At least. Yeah. Ma'am, I I saw the video that you showed a while ago. So yung yung yes, yung isang bata, na, you know, you, you mentioned na the very smart, very smart siya na uh, smart in math, ganito ganyan. But he doesn't know how to prepare food. Um That is really life-changing for them. Yeah. So, isn't that for me po, I think uh isn't that a little bit concerning uh na yung parang many of these uh, Gen Zers are um more focused on the the um on of course uh, trying to uh uh catch up with uh with grades this and that but then what's being left behind are appreciating their cultural heritage it um, is it is very okay. alarming and uh sisingilin tayo niyan yeah. as the world is going crazier and crazier maniningil na yan because what we mm. need now are prepping skills Exactly, po, and that's exactly. I'm aware what, of that. Yeah, that's exactly what scared me a while ago when seeing that, po, that Food you know. Food shortages are, are are coming out right in the mm -hmm. U.S. It's really going to happen. Yeah, yeah, I see. I see that happening, po. And uh, what there's a one very popular blogger, um, actually Nas. I don't know Nas Daily. Uh, if you've heard him about him, uh, Mam Andre Diva Nas Daily, yes, mentioning that um, he said that uh, we don't. Uh, right now, the popular courses are not social, uh, not social studies, or not this and that. You know, those are like the the least most popular um, uh, uh, subjects that you should take. But I I take that well. I I see a big problem with that uh, because right now I think the greatest problem is mental health, uh, and that's going to be a big problem for in the future, especially with this pandemic. Um, mental health is a problem. The same, uh, also po, losing culture, culture that is um, uh, slowly being uh, 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 taken away from the uh, 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 different uh, minorities, especially especially those who are endangered are those who are in the minority groups. Uh, and want, the, uh, oh, po, want the American culture. culture have become like the reference culture. They want one culture for the world. A unified yeah. culture for the world. So what's going to happen to our individuality? That's yeah. what oh, your yeah. World Economic Forum wants. Just yeah. one. Yeah. Unified culture. What do you see as a problem with that, Paul? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know that. Yes, oh, Paul. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know the... I, it, this, well, in my own, my one, Paul, it, we know that that's a big problem. Um, but that it's it's really sad actually Paul, that many people view it like that that you know there's no need why still learn other language if we could just have speak the same language why do you still yeah there's there there are great problems Paul. anyways i'm really excited about your uh karangkon po i re, that that's really really interesting I, sana po marami pa pong mga ganun, um and uh, with mom andre being able to already attend one of your karangkon Yes. How do we? How how does one get invited, Paul, in your current con events? It's open to all. It's open to all, Paul. Yes, yeah. Actually, oh, okay. uh, a friend messaged me the, the other day. A festive mall, Andre wants yes. to do a current con. Mm. Festive mall. One of the popular malls here is interested in hosting a current con. It's nice um, to bring, kasi malaki yung venue, um, food all over Iloilo or other provinces can join. Mm -mm. Do you have a website po or a Facebook page that uh, people can go if uh, to, to, to see your Karangkon events? Well, I have my private FB and I also have Instagram, Cuisina Ilonga, C-U-I-S-I-N-A. Ah, okay, let me see po. Is it okay yeah. if we post it in the uh, one po in in the uh, here for people to see po and follow you on uh, Facebook? Sure, sure. Tina Ilonga. Part of the advocacy. 
There we go. I'm gonna is kay, yung kan po yung um yung Facebook account niyo. Is it okay if we share it with them so that they can follow you? Yeah. Is it public? I don't know if it's public. It's Marie oh, no, Joy. It's, this one to uh, Facebook.com Joy Rosal that sumagay say. They can they can follow it's you there. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Nice, nice po. Um, in part of uh, Kapua po, because we're planning future events, uh, in-person events also, uh, can we collaborate with you in our future Kapua in-person events to create like Karangkun events? Uh, I, for... am, I am all for in-person events. Yeah. I, I really don't like, I don't like this virtual thing because this is not who we are. Yes, we are so beings. Maraming limitations po. Yeah. We are social beings, and how can you enjoy food, which is, which is uh, a visual and gustatory? Just imagine it here on screen. I know. How can I taste the uh, what you were showing me a uh, dark chocolate a while ago? Can we? Can a playa, we a playa, a playa po. How can we taste those uh, uh, wonderful food? What's that, po? Yeah, First ma. time for me to taste it myself because this is a dying candy. <laughs> this is a rare candy from a clan. It's it's limon, dulce de limon. Ah. Oh wow. So yeah. what is this made of, po? I don't know yet, but it's it it has no lemon taste at all. But they call it dulce de limon, and they use it to cure some stomach ache. Oh. So yes. is oh, wow. it soft? It is is it soft? No, it's hard. Oh, it's hard. It's hard. hard candy. Yeah. I still have to find out who the maker is. Yung oh. tableya po. Yung tableya? Opo, opo. Yeah, you want to see hey, it I again? <laughs> oh. There we go. Oh my gosh. How can I taste that? If we have a Zoom meeting like this, not in person. Yes, exactly. Dapat... exactly. <laughs> <laughs> when we, we did the Karangkon in Ibahay, I really insisted that I go because the, the events of, it was a series of events and their other speakers were all via Zoom. I said, I don't want to do Zoom. I want to go to Ibahay and meet, meet the teachers. How can we talk food if we cannot even see it that's, and that's taste it? Taste it. it. So, uh, so yes, I really yeah. Mga kapuwa, mga kapuwa po, um, pag nagkaka, magkaka in-person events na po tayo, ang kapuwa, that would be actually our first in-person event. So we want to make it big for everyone. Hopefully that you all can join. We will have our own version of Karangkon. Uh, hopefully ma-invite po natin po si, uh, si na ma'am po, uh, Ma'am Joy, to uh, collaborate with us para magkaroon tayo ng karangkon sa ating uh, in-person kapuwa event. At hindi lang po yung food ng taga Iloilo, yung food ng taga Pangasinan po with your mom. Yes. <laughs> Madala niyo po sa, sa ating venue. May title yes. na kayo, kan karangkon sa kapuwa. Yes, Ay, karangkon sa kapuwa. Pwede po. Kan pwede po karangkon yun. sa kapuwa. Ah, yes po. Pwedeng pwede. <laughs> <laughs> nice. We already have our title. Mom Joy, thank you so much. I wish we have more time to spend with you and talk about food yes, and uh, look at the different food po that you are. Uh, so we appreciate po all that you we've learned um, in this uh, lecture and hopefully po it will encourage more people to you know appreciate our culinary culture. Um especially I believe in 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 your call. Na Gen Zs really have a great role in um in this uh in the revitalization of our culinary heritage because you know in sabi nga po ng ating uh, uh si Dr. Jose Rizal na ang pag ang ang kabataan ng pag-asa ng bayan and I strongly believe in that po. <clears throat> but also you know great influence to our students are the teachers. So. Uh, we will try to encourage all our teachers, Paul. We will mention to them also the um, these events and get them hyped up for our in-person event ng Kapua. And uh, Karangkon sa Kapua will definitely happen, Paul, with your help and with your collaboration, Paul. Thank you, Mom Joy, for accepting uh, Kapua's invitation to, the, to do this lecture. 
Yes, Salamat. we've learned a lot. Thank you, thank you. Again po, salamat po sa mga dumalo sa ating um, uh, Kapua Kolektiratura event uh, this, um, well, this morning. Morning na dito sa Washington, D.C. It's 12.54 in the morning in, in Washington, D.C. I know it's tanghali na dyan. Tamang-tama sa uh, lunch, lunch po yes. ninyo. <laughs> sa akin, midnight snack na dito sa, yes. sa Washington, D.C. Maraming maraming salamat po. Here's the uh, the uh, Facebook of uh, Ma'am Joy Rosal po. Uh, so magaysay. So please follow her if you want to go and uh, uh, join them in the Karangkun events, in-person events po. These are in-person events. Hopefully you could also have something to share in their uh, Karangkun events. Bring your own food, bring your own specialty po uh, in those events. Again po, Ma'am Joy, maraming maraming salamat and we appreciate everything that we've learned. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Salamat, okay. Gid. More power Thank you. Sa inyo. Thank you. Maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you po. Thank you salamat po, Ma'am uh, Andre. Andre. Next Thank week you, po. sir. Next week po. Next week po. Next week po. Okay, Ma'am Fe Ay, next 29th of, Feb uh, of April po. Ma'am Feliz Santa Maria po uh, with her lecture on food also. Our last part for um collectoratura uh, for this food month and after that the next day po watch out for docyo commentario po with another international tribe from indonesia yun po yung next program okay. ng kultura po and the conversation po with the guinness uh, world record holder po on food happy food month po sa inyong lahat Maraming maraming salamat, Ma'am Andre. Maraming salamat, Ma'am Joy. Maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you po. Oh, I pressed.